The big picture is that we, we strive to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The big picture is that we strive to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the big picture. And this is what we must always keep in the forefront. Because in the final analysis, it's not about pleasing one another, appeasing one another. You know, it's about pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when we look to the sunnah of the Prophet <laughs> we will always be confronted with this reality. That everything that the Prophet said or did, his objective was to please Allah. And so like him, we should strive to please Allah first and foremost. And we are fortunate that Allah gave us this example. The example of the Prophet ﷺ. Not just for us to read the books and, you know, figure things out on our own, but that we actually have the example of the Prophet who taught his companions, who lived amongst them, who ate amongst them, who uh, uh, taught them, who showed them, who demonstrated for them. And so part of the sunnah is us really embodying some of this prophetic manner, mannerism of engaging with people, right? And this is a blessing. The Prophet ﷺ was instructed by Allah, just to emphasize the point of the matter being about Allah, the Prophet ﷺ was instructed to say in Surah Al-An'am, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, قُلِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتِ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah said to the Prophet ﷺ to say to the people, because people questioned his motives. Well, why is it that you insist on this? Or you insist on that? <coughs> Why does it have to be the way you say it has to be? Why do you insist on living the way that you do, O oh Muhammad? And Allah instructed him to say, Inna salati wa nusuki, my prayer and my, all of my acts of worship. In fact, my very life and my death are, are surrendered to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the big picture is that I am here by Allah. Everything that I do, I strive to do for the sake of Allah. And when I leave, I will, I will leave by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so everything that I do is for this purpose. And Allah is Rabbul Alameen. Lillahi Rabbul Alameen. The sustainer of the worlds. La sharikala, he has no partners. Wabidhalika umirt, and this is what I was inspired to do. This is what was revealed to me by the Messenger of Allah to me, Jibra'il, who delivered the message. Be this way. Wa ana awwal muslimin. So before I tell you to surrender, I am the first of those who surrender. And so the Messenger of Allah lived the message, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he didn't just preach it, he didn't just talk it, he didn't just beat people over the head with a stick, the stick of correction, the stick of reform. He engaged in it himself. So he did work on himself. He strove to improve himself. And so this is the prophetic way that we start with ourselves. And if we're going to be hard, that we're hardest on ourselves. In a, a Sahih Hadith, the Prophet is reported to have said to one of the companions, because throughout the year, we've been driving home a particular theme 
our discussions, the, the chuppahs have really been uh, uh, nested in the idea, a few central ideas. One of the central ideas is it that it matters how we are. That matters. See, Muslims aren't people who are hypocrites. And the reality of the world that we live in, we have Muslimun, we have Kafirun, and we have Munafiqun. This is a reality of the human condition. So you have believers, you have disbelievers, and then you have hypocrites. And our community is not immune. The community of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of 1400 years ago, 1450 years ago in Medina, there were hypocrites in Medina. There were people who went to the Prophet, they were with the Muslims, they said we're with you. They came to Jumu'ah, they were in the mosque, they were in the classes, they were around the Messenger of Allah, and even the Prophet himself sallallahu did not know about their presence until Allah told him. There's a surah in the Quran called Al-Munafiqun. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ They had beautiful words. When they came around the Prophet, they said, We bear witness that you are the messenger of God. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ and Allah doesn't need the hypocrites to tell to affirm that. Allah knows you're his messenger. Wallahu yashhadu inna munafiqeen la kadibun. But Allah also bear witnesses that the hypocrites are liars. And so part of what we have to do, understanding the nature of, of human beings, is that we have to take care to guard ourselves of, from hypocrisy. That we don't become hypocrites. That we don't become people that do things, that say things that we don't even try to do. True believers take care. The prophets of the Quran says, اتخذوا أيمانهم جنة فصدوا عن سبيل الله إنهم ساء ما كانوا يعملون Surah Al-Munafiqun is self-explanatory. They take their oath. Wallahi, we're, Muslim. Wallahi, we're the best of Muslims. We're the, the, the righteous Muslims. We're, we're on it. اتخذوا ايمانهم جنة It's a way for them to conceal the deviousness of their hearts. فصدوا عن سبيل الله But because people can see their actions, they in fact act as a barrier between people and faith. Because nobody likes a hypocrite. No one wants to be around a person that says one thing and does another. They, their actions are the most despicable of actions. That is because the hypocrites then what they do is they profess belief, and then when the believers aren't around, they profess disbelief. And as a result of this playing with Allah, Allah puts a seal on their hearts. So there's no guidance. There's no guidance. They can't even with reason, discern that this is the wrong path. That they're playing with Allah, and this, the outcome is damnation, but they can't reason. When you see the hypocrites, you're impressed. Presentation, speech, and when they talk, people listen. This is, this is an entire surah. Right? 
When you get a moment, read this sort. This whole sort is a narrative. The narrative is about a duplicitous psyche. And Muslims aren't duplicitous people. <coughs> See, the beauty of Islam is that Allah accepts us for who we are. But when we engage in duplicity, you know, a type of schizophrenia where I'm Muslim with the Muslims and then I'm something else with somebody else, this is a, a sick psyche. And spiritually, this is a sickness. And it's called nifaq. And this is why the Prophet said, المنافق إذا حدث كذب or كذب when the hypocrite talks he's a perpetual liar and when the sahaba may Allah be pleased with them when they would hear about the munafiqs people like Sayyidina Umar people like Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an people like Sayyidina Uthman and others when they would hear the Messenger of Allah speak about the hypocrites or describe them, they always accuse themselves first. And one of the distinct differences between how we engage with the tradition and how they engage with the tradition is that they always accuse themselves first. And we tend to accuse other people. So the funny thing is, we may hear, well, these are some of the characters. I know a brother like that. That's what's wrong with Brother Fulan or Sister Fulan. They're a hypocrite. Instead of being, you know, accusing ourselves first. Instead of assuming, you know, there are things about me that I need to improve upon. And so when the Prophet said to that young person, one of the prescriptions to cure the heart of Nifaq is to be conscious of Allah. This is what taqwa is. And he said to this person, fear God wherever you are. So it's not circumstantial, you know, it's not in the mosque. You know, in the Christian tradition, you have high rollers, or holy rollers. And the holy rollers are the people who always are correcting people in their faith and quoting Bible and, you know, pointing out the mistakes. And no, no, you said that wrong. Oh, no, you did that wrong. Well, don't sit like that. Don't stand up like that. Don't do that. The holy rollers, and they might stop you on the street and give you a dissertation about faith, about God, about damnation, about salvation. We have this persona in the, in the mosque, in Islam. The Muslims are always correcting everybody. They know everybody's probably have solutions. The solution is always so simple. All you got to do, brother <coughs> or sister, There's a danger in that. The presumption of our own spiritual consciousness or development, our own taqwa. We presume that I've arrived. That's why we call them holy rollers. Right? The Prophet said, Let you be nested in taqwa. Strive to be conscious. Don't be a Muslim that just does stuff. Too many times we just do stuff. We show up to the mosque because that's what we're supposed to do. It's learned behavior, learned habits. And unless we are engaging with these prayers in a meaningful way, that this dunya is no joke. And unless we're consciously engaged, this is what taqwa does, then you can just go through the motions. Personally, my, 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 my dad used to call it banging your head on the carpet. Don't be a carpet banger. You come to the mines, you boom, boom, boom. Then you get up and it doesn't matter what type of person you are. Doesn't matter what you do to other people. Doesn't matter as much. And it's a little deeper than that, right? وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُوهَا Whenever you make a mistake, whenever you commit a sin, right, follow up sinful behavior with good deeds. But you have to be conscious to do that. 
So if you don't uh, give sin the weight, the gravity that sin deserves, because you're not perfect. None of us are perfect. But if we don't give sin the gravity that sin deserves, we will tend to be dismissive. It doesn't really matter. But the Prophet said, at the Sayyi'a al Hasana Tabhuha. So we if we engage in this type of behavior, it will help us to purify ourselves. And then he said at the end of the hadith, nas bi khuluqin hasan. See, your character can take you a long way. With your character, you don't have to say a lot. You don't have to give a dissertation, a lecture, a speech at your job if you're the person. And your character includes your ethics. So some of us that have jobs, I personally advocate that the Muslims should be the hardest working people, show up on time, you know, work late, work hard, earn their money. They should be people who are trusted in any establishment. I don't have to worry about Fulan because he's a Muslim. He, you know, he's not going to steal from us. Look at what the problem is in the world today. One of the biggest problems in our society right now today is the depth of greed. And when you understand their sophisticated greed, you know, I've been to parts of the Muslim world. So you go to Egypt, for example, there's this thing called bakshish. And people mistakenly assume that when you come to America, there's no bakshish. There's bakshish in America too. But it's sophisticated. We have a different name for it. It's done differently. But it's done. Just imagine the impact that people who are honest, as honest as you can expect human beings to be, not perfect, not perfect, but honest, ethical people, that matters. And this is why it matters when the Prophet says, Hassan, <laughs> because your character does matter. It doesn't matter where you work, the corporate world, or if you just have a, a job, a regular job, it's your character that will distinguish you from the next man. Not your protestations, not your proclamations, not your corrections, not your da'wah that you give out of your mouth. Do this, do that, don't do this. What's going to matter is how you engage with people. That's what's going to leave the impact. This, wallahu a'lam, is what I believe is closest to embodying the sunnah of the Prophet We ask Allah Ta'ala to bless us to follow the sunnah of the Prophet in the best way. Closing brothers and sisters, we have one announcement, and that is in relationship to the spelling bee that was scheduled to be held here in the mosque. The Arabic spelling bee has been, been rescheduled uh, to January 5th, inshallah. So after the new year, there will be a spelling bee here in the mosque, an Arabic spelling bee. And I uh, just wanted to pass that on to everyone, inshallah. Allah wa sallu ala Sayyidil Musaneena wa Imam al-Muttaqeen Faqad amarakum Allahu bithalika fi kitabi al-Aziz Faqada jalla min qail Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayyu al-Ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Wa yaqulu alayhi abdalu salati wa taslim Man salla alayya marra Salla Allahu alayhi biha ashra Allahumma salli wa sallim وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك نبينا محمد ورب اللهم عن الصحابة والتابعين ومن تبع عجهم وهداهم إلى يوم الدين ورب اللهم عنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين 
ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وطب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه إنك لا تخلف الميعاد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزلكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقدم الصلاة الحمد لله الله أكبر